Hello everyone and welcome back to the 147th episode of the Top 5 Weekly. Now for those of you that are new here, this is a series where I take a look at the most popular workshop creations on Steam, analyze each one of the creations, discover their features and test them out there in Stormux. But before we get started, if you are enjoying my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe button and while you're watching, let me know your thoughts of the creations in the comments below. So that all said, let's get straight into it and let's get started with this week's episode. And starting this week's episode off the first creation, we have the Luftwaffle. Um, yeah, you pretty heard that right, I think. Uh, this is a waffle, but a aircraft that is modernized. <laughs> I don't know what else to really say about this. Uh, let's just go and spawn it in and see what it's like. And spawning in the creation, I mean, yeah, it's a waffle. It's, it's 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 a waffle that has some propellers and probably some weapons on it. <laughs> so it looks like we've got electrical engines. Apparently you do need infinite electricity for this. I do have that enabled. We've got a rotary auto cannon here. Looks like one ammo. What else do we have? That's pretty much about it. Some control surfaces, a handle, and that's pretty much about it. So, I mean, throttle. Up we go. <laughs> sure. Do we have at least a, like a sight? No, no sight. No sight on this thing. Um, oh, hold on. You have to hold. You have to hold up and down. <laughs> Oops. You need to hold up and down, by the way. Um, that's it. Okay. I'm going to trim it. So that I don't have to hold it. Um, yeah, we got roll. We've got left and right. Does that's pretty much about it. What about the gun? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it shoots pretty much straight forwards, doesn't it? Um, all right, and that's that's the gun done. <laughs> There's no way I'm on it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> the the Stormworks community. I mean, uh, let's just let's just put this thing straight into the mountain. Um, <laughs> let's go and move on to the next one for the episode. And moving on to the next creation of the episode, we have the S641 Ambush. Now, the Ambush is a diesel attack submarine, and it apparently is designed to be used for multiple of different things, uh, including anti-shipping, uh, mine laying, intelligence gathering, coastal patrols, and so on. Uh, Feature-wise, it has uh, six torpedoes, it has six sea mines, and also has two APN-guided cruise missiles. So quite a cool bunch of features, so let's go and spawn it and see how it works. All right, and spawning in the next creation, very nice looking submarine, interesting design to this uh, with the stabilizer fins on the sides pointing upwards at the moment. I'm guessing they will deploy later on. Uh, overall, yeah, really nice looking submarine. It is a little bit laggy. We did get quite a few warnings when we spawned this in, but I think it will get better once we get away from the dock. Uh, looks like this is a very big door, so I'm guessing this will probably open up. Uh, we've also got, what is this, hatch here for winch stuff, all right. Uh, let's carry on going down. So we've got a hatch there, so escape hatch. Looks like a little bit of a bridge here. All right, carry on through. Some handles to go up to the top. Carry on through, we've got some ropes. We've got some aft escape hatches and some flares. All right, uh, is there a way to get inside? Let's check on this side. Yes, okay, there's a hatch over there. Interesting, I wonder what this is. Looks like a little hole there. Okay, let's carry on through here. Uh, what do we have inside here? Okay, let's close that off. So we've got a padded seat here. Okay, so I'm guessing you can just sit in here if you want to. We've got bridge lights and we've got a option to go up the seat. That's pretty cool. I like that idea. So when you are above the water, you can come up here and do some spotting if you want to. Uh, we can lower the seat. There we go. And the seat goes and lowers. Uh, great. And we can close the lights off. And I'm guessing the hatch closes. It does. Cool, let's go downstairs, let's see what's happening. So we jumped down here, it looks like uh, a couple different rooms. I mean, let's go left first. Looks like a little crew mess area. All right, with a little stove here, an oven. Carry on down, so this is the passageway, a little heater. Uh, we've got the, I'm guessing, escape hatch, yep. We've got a battery torpedo compartment. Carry on down, down, down. Uh, we come into a crew area for us to sleep and rest. And then eventually to a medical room. And that's got some lights and things. Okay, carry on this way now. So we're heading towards back towards the bridge and the uh, main area. Okay, armory. Okay, so just a bunch of weapons inside here if you need them. And then we can carry on through and we're back to where we were. 
And the next part is, I'm guessing, the control room. Yep, so the control room in here. I will come back to that in a few minutes when we get the lights on in the meantime. Uh, then we go left. We have got some firefighting equipment just outside the engine room. And then inside the engine room, of course, the engines. The light switch, yes. All right, cool. So nice big engines, nice detailing inside here too. Uh, looks like a bunch of buttons and things. We'll come back to those in a few minutes. Uh, these keys do nothing. <laughs> okay. And then we carry on down. Engines, nice. Electrical motors. Quite a few XML edits pieces here and there. I mean, it looks pretty cool. I like the big shafts here. Makes it really look realistic. Cool. Oops, I got stuck in there. Bowls and bearing access. All right, I mean, let's go to the control room. Let's see if we can get this thing started and maybe start setting sail. Cool, so we're going to go through here. We're going to get the engine room lights off. There is a low main machinery hatch. I'll leave that. Uh, let's go in here. Okay. Nice little control room. I like it. I like the seat, how it's angled like that. Uh, lots of screens, lots of different things going on. All right. Okay, let's get this uh, up and running, I guess. So uh, we can sit in here, and apparently we need to get um, the engines on. So... All right, so to get this thing started, I think we just press one and two, if I'm correct. Uh, we've got like a depth hold system over here that we can use. So you can set the depth on and off as you want. Um, we've also got, looks like speed, compass settings, arrays, periscopes. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. Periscope goes up. Very cool. And then you can obviously change that. We should be using this under the water, though. Uh, that's pretty cool. So you can see it's like a gimbal camera at the top there. That's quite nice. Uh, looks like else we have. Okay, fire. All right, cool. Okay, so let's go and head off here. We'll go forwards. We are starting to dive already because I already have set the depth hold system. And we're going to cruise off to the left here, possibly underneath the bridge, and come out of this river or estuary. Very cool. So everything seems to be working really nicely at the moment. So I don't want to hit anything <laughs> while I'm going along here. Uh, okay, nice. Let's go and play around with some of these toys. So we've got this gimbal camera, we've got stabilize, we've got laser if we want it. Guessing it's an infrared laser, possibly. Yeah, I'm guessing infrared laser. That's an infrared camera. Uh, we've also got our torpedo master arms. This is what I'm guessing GPS. Uh, cruise missiles, maybe. Uh, switch on laser detonator. All right. Uh, master arm increase, decrease. No GPS data. Does that mean we've got no GPS data on the camera? Possibly. I think we would do, wouldn't we? Laser is on. Maybe not. Um, what is the speed? Not okay. Uh, and what if we were to put in a GPS point and then put it in here? Does that make a difference? There we go. So inactive, and then what, we just press on fire? Does that do anything? We need to be above the water, maybe? Kind of starting to think that we need to be above the water. For the cruise, oh, we're also going to hit the dock, or hit this bridge here, so I'm going to slow down. Oh, there goes the missile, look! Oh, that's pretty cool. So we need to be above the water for that to actually happen. Uh, I don't think I can fire it all from here, because we're probably going to hit... The bridge. Let me just turn around here. All right, slow down, slow down. Okay, it's closing itself. We're trying to. Let's get through here. Start hitting the bridge, and let's go make a right. And we're going to open up. Fire. Master arm off. Master arm on. And there we go. So now it's armed itself. So the cruise missiles inside there, and then we can go and fire it. <laughs> that's pretty cool and there it goes so it's going towards that gps waypoint that we just set here it is on my screen that's pretty cool i mean yeah really cool really cool little submarine or actually a little big submarine uh let's go ahead let's move on to the next one for the episode and moving on to the next creation of the episode we have the vf6 now the vf6 is an advanced carrier capable VTOL. Uh, apparently for multi-role capabilities, so there's air-to-air, air-to-surface, and also air-to-ship attacks. Uh, along with that, a couple of really cool features, apparently a really nice MFD on this. Uh, a very, very long uh, Steam Workshop page with startup checking lists and guides and all kinds of different things. So let's go and spawn it and see how it works. All right, and spawning in the jet, um, very nice looking, very futuristic here towards the front. Uh, quite a big jet. 
uh, in comparison to some of the other VTOLs that we've seen before. But I mean, overall, it looks really cool. Uh, looks like we've got jet intakes over here. Looks like some nice XML edit windows also. Uh, looks like jet exhaust. We have our roll power, bingo settings. We've got pylons, so this obviously doesn't come with any weapons. You need to load them in manually. Uh, we've got some flares or some shafts at the back. Uh, looks like a tail hook or resting hook here. Um, that's pretty much about it. Looks like recharging, fuel, a few other things inside there. Um, and that's pretty much about it. I mean, we have a canopy option here. Uh, we also have canopy option there. And then we have two seats. So this is the rear one, if I'm correct. And in here, we've got radars and a few other things, bomb sites. This is how you would manage all your weapons and things, if I'm correct. Uh, and then over here is the front pilot. And then inside here, we've got a bunch of controls. Now, there is a starting up procedure. I recommend you guys follow it if you are going to check out this creation. Uh, I'm going to shoot through it. Uh, there is a pylon bus. What else is there? The FCR bus. We've got a tail hook, wing folding for carrier option operations. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's go and unfold that. Uh, what else do we have? Throttle here. Parking brake. Now, get a nose wheel steering. AR door. Okay. Gear lever. We got hydraulic pumps, canopy, head cage, dog fights, engine starters, cross feed pumps, FCS, okay, FCS master. Get all those on. Position lights, beacon lights, strobe lights. Get all those on too. FCS master. We do need an FCS bus, maybe. Sure, why not? Don't remember reading anything about that on the starting procedure, but all right. Uh, beautiful little heads up screen. Nice. Okay, looks like our oh, speed, alt, heading. We've also got a couple things over here. So we've got HSI, so communications for radios. We've got our artificial horizon and HSI, so your degrees. All right. Uh, here we've got brightness, I think. Let's go back. SMS. Okay, I don't know what that is. Engine, what was engine? We've got HSI, radar, FCS. All right, and we've also got the map, camera, and configuration. Okay, this is config, so you could do this, which I'm guessing is brightness. Yes, it's a brightness of how bright and how unbright it is. All right, uh, pretty straightforward there. I like it. Last little screen, I like the little buttons. That is pretty cool. Um, and looks like you're also doing either using a project projection, so you're projecting it from another screen inside your creation, or you've used some other Lua code to make that really small writing. Um, but besides that, I mean, everything else looks really cool on this. I like it. Uh, cool, let's get this thing up in the air. So we could possibly do VTOL takeoff. So that would be three, if I'm correct. That would be to tilt the nozzles. Uh, we're going to try not do that. <laughs> right now, let's get this up in the air first. Uh, so we're going to throttle up. We do have our brakes on currently at the moment. Okay, well, it looks like we can get those off. And let's get the brake. Oh, I mean, that's. Oh, I wasn't expecting it, considering it said collective. The throttle up is two. Yeah, let's get the thing in the air. I saw collective up and down, so that's why I was like, okay, well. But then what is collective? Oh, maybe the collective is only when you're in VTOL mode. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting the collective to be that. Okay. Let's get our parking brake on. Let's get nose wheel off. Let's get gear lever up. And that folds everything away. Nice and straightforward. I think we're not at full throttle, so we can get more throttle here. Watch out. We don't hit the mountains. And there we go. So get a nice bit of throttle out there. Very cool. Looks like it flies pretty well, too. Nice. We've got all of our stabilizations and things on. Very cool. Okay, let's put this thing into VTOL mode. So it's three. Okay, nose is going up. Let's get the nose down. Oh, hello. I think it might balance itself out after a while. Oh, maybe we need to get some of this stuff off. Roll your pitch. Get this pitch off. Not really, is it? All right. Uh, I mean, let's take that. I don't know what's happening with that. Uh, let's just turn this off. Cool. Kind of followed up this procedures, but okay. Um, full throttle. All righty. 
you know, overall pretty cool. I like how the you can see the tail there moves. That's pretty cool. And that everything else seems pretty cool. I like how nice and agile it is. It's not too agile. It's also not too stiff. It seems like it's just doing really well. It also looks like it's flying more or less level. You can see the nose is pulling up a bit, but I guess you could trim that out. Oh, that's really nice to see something like that. So when you do a test like that, you can tell the plane is not trimmed right because if it's trimmed too high or low, we just go straight into the ground. But there we go. It's doing a really nice job there. As you said, we can just trim the nose uh, just a little bit down. Just to make sure the nose kind of flies flat. Or did I take? No, I've got everything on. Yeah, I mean, pretty cool. I like it. Pretty cool. I'd like to maybe see the creator add some default weapons on this. Um, just like a mix of everything. Kind of like what have we done with A10? Or a lot of other creations also have got. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, really, really cool little creation. I love the MFD screens. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, those are really quite nice. All right, let's go ahead. Let's move on to the next creation of the episode. And moving on to the next creation of the episode, we have the DT-30. This is a air defense module, and I'm guessing it's got some rockets inside it or some type of weaponry systems. Uh, but the actual vehicle itself apparently can do a maximum speed of about 120 kilometers per hour apparently it has an underwater speed all right that's interesting um let's go ahead and spawn in and spawning in the creation definitely a arctic themed tractor vehicle here uh looks like we've got a bunch of compartments on the outside camo scheme as you can tell uh what do we have all these things so we've got a toggle so that looks like refueling yes refueling and this will be recharging okay anyway to close this once we've opened it I can't remember where the button is. Oh, uh, there it is there. <laughs> okay, we found it on the end. This one, where's the button for this one? Um, over there, some kind of indication would be nice, possibly. Okay, there we go, cool. I've uh, got a door, um, maybe to get in. Let's just have a little walk around this and let's just see what's going on. So another door to go in over here, another door to go in over here, all right. Let's close those doors off. Those are all big doors and all sealable, which is very important if you're going underwater. Uh, towards the rear. Nothing else really towards the rear. Uh, looks like a couple more hatches here at the back. Looks like just some equipment. And uh, now I need to find that button again. There we go. Uh, I can see it's all connected there. Another door there. Looks like this is probably about engine. Yeah, engine hatch just for some detailing and you can repair it. Uh, big diesel engine over there. How do we close this? There we go. And let's go and get inside this. Alright. Uh, so jump up here. We can go and close. We can also lock all these doors. Okay. We've got a key switch for a starter. Red lights, white lights, jammers, heater, monitors, spotlights, generator on off, uh, jam frequency. Do we have anything for power? There we go. Main power, starter on, white lights, heaters, monitors. Wow. Okay. Very green. All right. Nice. Uh, we've got generator. We can turn that on and off. I'll go turn it on now. Uh, looks like we've got passenger seat, which has got a radar on it. It's got a bunch of screens. All right, weather station. Cool. It's like my little weather station. Green color. Very cool. I see that's still being used. Uh, we've got, what do we have over here? So monitors, tracking information, fire missiles, I'm guessing, target radar locks. All right. Uh, we've got power. Let's go through here. What do we have in here? A bunch of seats in here. Doors or med station or med room inside. I like the, I like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's go through here. We've got a bunch of doors again, and it looks like an equipment room of some sort. Uh, we've also got a crew room. Okay, nice. And that's pretty much about it. I don't think there's anything else. We do. Oh wait, the engine room. No, no, that's it. Nothing else. Uh, what's in here? It's like a little access hatch to the engine room. Yeah, you can see both the engines right here. Must be quite loud, loud for the driver. Uh, okay, well, how does this thing work? So we've got monitors, we've got open. Aha, so those are the big two missile tubes. Yeah, and you can see the missiles inside there. I can barely see them. Uh, we can do range up, target lock, toggle radar. So that's radar, and then you can, I'm guessing, wait until you detect something and then get a lock on it and then shoot it. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go and turn that off, and I want to see how well this thing drives. Cool, so that's going to go and fold away. Nice. Okay. Uh, so I'm guessing is there any indication for the parking brake? Not really. Okay, let's just go forwards then. 
Oh, it's quick. Very quick. I wasn't expecting it to be this quick. Two large engines. It's actually driving really well too. I mean, it's getting pretty straight. It's pretty cool. I'm guessing this thing could probably do off-road too. I mean, let's try. It's got tracks on it, so I wouldn't see why not. Yeah. Very cool. Ah, it's really big, but also you don't expect it to have missiles on the back. Just like a mobile, mobile base, really. Got everything you need inside it. And that it can go underwater too. Uh, I wasn't expecting that out of the equation too. It looks like we might have damaged something, possibly, me driving too quickly. But um, yeah, I mean, this is really cool. I think the Grace has done a fantastic job. Can we get parking brake and also jammers and things inside here? I wonder if we can fire this off without any locks on it. Uh, let's try. Wait for it to open. Probably not going to shoot anything. Oh, that wasn't happy, was it? That kind of opened a little bit too quickly. Yeah, it wasn't happy with that. Um, Alright, I mean, <laughs> we're not going to find that now considering it's all broken here at the back. Um, So yeah, it looks like it just tried to lift too quickly. So let's try it one more time. Monitors on, open. So how did it damage itself earlier on? Because that looks like it waited more than enough time. Alright, well, something must have got bugged off there. Um, probably not the creator's fault, probably just Stormworks being Stormworks with its physics. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a really cool creation. I think this is really fun. There's so many things on this also. Little hatches here at the top. The, it, there's, you know, the one thing I could possibly recommend and be like, yeah, I'll add it for fun. It's maybe add like a little turret wing with a machine gunner on top. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? I mean, that's just one extra thing on there. But, I mean, this is a really cool creation. I think it's great. Let's go ahead and move on to the last, next one and the last one for the episode. And moving on to the last creation of the episode, we have the Maraka. This is meant to be the Airbus H285, uh, and it's an advanced multi role by jet engine VTOL. Um, apparently got quite a few features on there. Uh, we've got altitude, autopilot, all those cool things, 111 or 110 knots max speed. Uh, capable of obviously weapons and all the other cool things that you would normally see on these cool creations. So let's go and spawn it and see how it works. And spawning in the VTOL, I mean, really nice looking. I like the design of this. Definitely got that VTOL look to it. Double jet engines on either side. Oh, very interesting. Looks like it's leaning one side. Oh, no, now it's coming back. All right. Uh, what do we have? Gimbal cameras. We've got all kinds of things going on in this creation, don't we? Air to air refueling. Looks like radars, possibly sonars. I mean, really nice. Pylon system over there, so you can maybe mount some machine guns, some cannons there. Really cool. Very nice. All right, let's go and get inside it. So we can jump up here. Tons of seats here for passengers. Um, would recommend maybe naming these with like uh, seat one, seat two, so you can use it with Stormlink. That is one suggestion I can think of there. Left sliding door closed. We've got the right sliding door. Once again, more passenger seats along the side here. All right, pretty cool. I like it. Detailing is quite nice in here. Uh, let's go and close that door. And then up in the cockpit. So we've got co-pilot and pilot. A uh, bunch of nice screens here. I always like seeing a bunch of screens. Got a whole bunch of panels up here too for us to click on. Okay, I mean, let's start clicking on things. <laughs> so we, got, we need to get uh, this little starting procedure. Battery relays, engine relays. So I'm able to get those things on. So that's engine, battery, generators, avionics, engine relays. Uh, we have generators, relays. Okay, so just pretty much all those things. And then fuel pumps. Okay, nav lights we need on, cabin lights sure, back lights sure, refueling pump, we've got cabin heat, transponders, caution warnings, transport GPS, okay, fuel pump startups, fuel pump startups. Right. Uh, we've got lock doors, switch pilot seat, release gear, landing gear, we've got alt hold, autopilot, precision mode, switch monitor. Uh, we've got PFD, okay, cool. PFD monitor, nice. Is there another one? I'm guessing that one there. All right, so artificial horizon looks like compass. Okay, throttle, cool engines. Can you switch the screens? Yes, we, no, that one. I guess that's a little camera. Radios and a few other things in there. 
Ah, uh, oh, there we go. So you can switch map, radar, stabilize gimbal camera. Nice, okay, I like that. So you can all switch this one. All right, cool, we've got hard points, we've got alt hold, RPS, windshield tracks, uh, fire left, right, hard points. Okay, so you can add the hard points on. That might have machine guns or cannons or something on it. But detailing is spot on, isn't it? Really pretty cool. All right, I mean, we can, we're can we pretty much good to go, aren't we? A low fuel, low battery. Really? Or maybe it's just meant to be like that, and maybe it's meant to, like, illuminate if it does then have it. Um, all right, let's go and get, do we need to adjust the throttle? Maybe, maybe not. Collective? Oh, hello. Okay, so that's going up, no problem at all. Landing gear is a fold. It does, I think. Let's get our landing gear. There we go. And then it's going to fold it away. Very cool. So let's go into hitch. So that's W and S. Nice. Okay. It doesn't really move the nose. It just keeps the nose level and just pitches the jets. Okay. And then let me increase an alt then. It's just up and down, I guess. Yeah, so you just use up and down. Oops, a little bit funky there. There you go. I think it's because I'm holding up and W and S at the same time, so let's just do W first. Yeah, it's kind of having a little bit of a hard time. Did I forget to do something? No, let's get RPS fully up now. Okay, we are moving, yeah. Very interesting design. Precision mode, switch monitor, altitude hold. I mean, we'll probably do the alt hold stuff. So if we do alt hold, we have to enter it in. So what we do, let's just try that. Enter in alt hold 200. And then let's try waypoint uh, setting. Why not? Enter that in. And let's throw in autopilot. So then it should start turning us. And it's doing that funky thing at the front again. Flares, there's three. Did we actually lose a flare? Three? Hello? Three? I guess not. Flares is not possible. All kinds of things underneath there, isn't there? That's pretty cool. Flares are on either wing, but they haven't been sent off. We need to arm them at some point. I don't think we do, to be honest. Locked doors retract. Any of this stuff, master, master arm maybe, cockpit light switch, you can change that. Cabin lights, refueling pumps, transponders, cautions. Alright, we've got everything else turned on, maybe now, three? Yes, there we go, we need a master arm in order to get the flares to deploy themselves. Oh, those are like chaffs. Or chafes, nice. That's pretty cool. I wasn't expecting those. There's a ton of them. Look, there's there, there's there, there's there. There's quite a lot. So it looks like 10 or more more of those. 14 or 16 of those. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it seems like it's doing pretty well. Yeah, 110 knots, top speed. You can still see the VTOLs have calmed themselves down a little bit, all the jet engines. They're not rotating as much as they were earlier on. But it's a very interesting design I think the crate has gone for. And I think it's really cool. It's very unique. You don't see a lot of these things over on the workshop. And yeah, just overall looks really cool. Very, very nice. Kind of kind of just makes me want to carry on building my survival series. Oh, hello. What's happening with that guy? Uh, it kind of makes me want to just carry on building my survival series VTOL and get it finished because this thing is really cool. So guys, uh, we're going to end it over there for this episode. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. There's been some really amazing creations, some really cool ones. Uh, let me in the comments uh, what you think of the creations. And if you want to check out any of them, they are in the video description. So you can go get some love of creators and go show them some support. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. Until the next one, we will see you then.